In a previous video, we built this decimal decoder that takes an 8-bit uh, binary value here and will display whatever that value is equal to as a decimal number here, either as a 2's complement, in which case it's positive or negative, or we can switch it uh, to be signed, or unsigned rather, so that it just displays the normal whatever the binary value here is in, in decimal. Now to use this as the output for our computer, we don't want the number to be just hard-coded like this. We want to have a register that we can write to, and whatever value is in that register is what get, gets displayed here. So let's get rid of these. And this is kind of fun because now these pins are floating and we can just kind of mess around with it. But anyway, I'll disconnect power. And what we want to do is we want to build a register that connects to our computer's bus that we can then store a value in, and whatever value is stored in that register is what gets displayed. So I'm going to add another breadboard here, but first I'm going to remove the power strip from the top here uh, because we've already got the power strip for this other breadboard, and we can just snap this in here. Now we've built 8-bit registers in previous videos, and this is an example here uh, of an 8-bit register for the A register that we built. And we've got the 8-bit bus connected here, and you can see that that bus goes into the 74LS173s, and, and it also comes out through the 74LS245. And then each of the 74LS173s stores 4 bits of data. And so to store data in this uh, register, you'd put whatever value you want to store on the bus. That would come in here, and it would go to these inputs on both of these chips. And then we'd have our A in signal, uh, which is right here. We'd take this low, because it's an active low signal. And then on the next clock pulse, because these chips are, are uh, clock edge triggered, on the next clock pulse, it would take whatever data is on the bus and store it here. And then we'd be able to see the output here on these LEDs. And of course, for an output register, we could just replace these LEDs with our nice decimal display. And in fact, we could build our output register using only the 74LS173s. We don't need the 74LS245. That's an extra feature that this register has that, that we don't need. And, and in this case, the 74LS275 is used so that the data can be read from the register. And if the 74LS245 is enabled using this A output uh, signal, then that data that's in the register will then be sent out onto the bus. But for the output register, we really only need data to come in from the bus and be displayed. We don't really need to take that data that's already been displayed and put it back on the bus. So we can do away with the 74LS245, and we could build it with just the two 74LS173s instead. But I'm actually going to do something different. Instead of using two 74LS173s, I'm going to use a 74LS273, which has eight D flip-flops in a single chip. And so within this single chip, you can see there's uh, eight inputs and eight outputs. And there's a uh, clock pulse uh, input here. And there's also a reset pin over here that just sets everything to zero. But otherwise, this just has eight D flip-flops. So you can see there's eight, eight flip-flops here. Each of them has an input. And so these are just the pin numbers here for each of those inputs. Uh, and then each has an output as well. And then there's a single clock pulse, which uh, is active on the rising edge. So on the rising edge of the uh, clock pulse, whatever is on the input goes to the output. Whether it's high, it goes high, or if it's low, it goes low. Uh, and then there's a master reset, which just clears everything to zero. So just to do something different, I'm going to use uh, this chip instead of building it the same way that we built the other registers. So here's the 74LS273. And of course, I'll start by connecting power and ground. So next I'll just hook the outputs of the register up to the address line uh, inputs of our EEPROM here. And the pinout for the 74LS273 uh, is, is a little bit wacky here, so these outputs are kind of spread around in, in kind of weird places, but you just have to make sure that the outputs uh, line up to the appropriate uh, inputs in the right order here. And so that's it now. So all of the uh, output pins here should be going to the appropriate uh, address lines here. So uh, Q0 through Q7 should go to A0 through A7 address lines here to provide the input for our, uh, our display. Now in addition to the inputs and outputs, there's also the clock pulse and the master reset. So I'll just tie, I'll just tie the master reset high for now so that uh, it's not active. And the clock input, I don't want to hook that directly to the computer system clock because then the register would latch in whatever's on the bus every clock pulse. And we don't want to do that. We want to have some control over when it latches in whatever's on the bus. So what I want to do is and the system clock with uh, some sort of control signal that uh, says whether or not we want to change the output display. 
So I am actually going to need a second chip uh, <laughs> to go with this uh, 273. So I thought I was saving a chip by, by not using two of the, the uh, 74LS 173s, but I am going to need an AND gate uh, to, <laughs> to be able to AND the clock pulse. And we didn't need that with the 74LS 173s because we've got the clock input, but then we also have an enable input here, or an input enable, I should say. But oh well, that's fine. It's easy enough to add an AND gate. This is just a 74LS08 quad AND gate chip, so we'll add that. And we'll hook up power and ground for that. And so the clock pulse for our uh, register, we want that to be the output of one of these AND gates, so we can just use the one that's closest here. The output then to the clock pulse, and then the inputs, one of those inputs is going to be a control signal that we'll hook up to our control logic later on, but for now, if it's low, then that means that this clock pulse will never change, and so the output will, will stay whatever it is. And then the other input will be the actual system clock, and so then if this goes high, then whenever the system clock pulses, then this uh, register will read in the contents from the bus and the output will change. So we have the, this control line that will control whether or not we want the output to change. So the other input to our AND gate has got to go up to our system clock. And so I'll connect this here, and if we come up here, you can see the system clock is used in this register here, and I can connect that there to, to the system clock up here. Get this LED back in place. And so then, yeah, the system clock will come down and connect to the other input of our AND gate. So there we go. We've got our clock coming in, we've got our control signal coming in, and then the output of that goes into the actual clock input of our 74LS273. And so the output that we're actually displaying over here will only change if the if this if the output register is enabled and the clock pulse comes. So that's actually about it for the output register. Uh, although of course we need to connect it to our bus, and I think now is as good a time as any to to actually connect everything to the bus, because at this point we've got pretty much everything done except for the control logic. Now to make the bus, I'm going to use these power rails that we've pulled out uh, from between these boards as we've connected them together. And so I'm going to take four of these and connect them together, because these, these actually connect together very nicely, like, like this. And this will make up our bus, because this then gives us eight signals that go up and down like this, and we can connect all of the different components of our computer to those same eight signals. And actually to go the whole uh, height of our computer, I'm going to use two of these connected uh, together like this. But because we're going to sandwich uh, the, the bus in between kind of the two halves of our computer, we do have these little uh, connector tabs on the, on the one side that I want to get rid of so that everything just kind of fits snugly together. So to get rid of those, you can just use uh, some little wire cutters to, to try to snap them off. And they snap off pretty well. So now this should fit together a little bit better. So we'll start by joining the two pieces of the bus. There we go. And then I'm going to set my bus up so that it lines up at the top. And I'll go ahead and connect the new register that we just built to the bus. So there we go. I think we've got uh, D0 through D7 hooked up appropriate to the appropriate places on our uh, register. So that should do, do it for our register, but of course, we might as well go ahead and hook everything else up to the bus as well. So just above our output, we've got our B register and our sum and our A register and our program counter. So I can start hooking these things up to the bus as well. So this is the program counter, and of course the program counter has only uh, got four bits, so we only need to hook the first four bits up to our bus. And of course those will go to the, the four least significant bits on the right, and then the top bits will just all be zero. So we we'll actually have to tie everything on our bus to ground uh, through, through pull-down resistors at some point. Next we've got the A register here, and so that's just a full 8-bit uh, register that we can hook right to our bus. So there's the A register, all 8 bits of that hooked up to the bus. And we can do the exact same thing with the B register. So that's the B register. So now we've got our A register and our B register both hooked up to the bus. And of course the A register and B register feed into the sum register, which is either going to add or subtract the contents of the A and B registers, and that can output its contents to the bus as well. So let's hook the sum register up to the bus now. So there's the output of the sum register, or the ALU, going to the bus as well. 
Now the other side of our computer, we can bring that over here and connect that up as well. And so of course this is our clock up here, but next we've got the memory, and there's the memory address register, and then of course the memory contents. So the memory address register, we can hook that up now. First it looks like I need to move these uh, connections from the A register down just a little bit, so I've got room. So our memory addresses are only four bits, so we only need to hook up the lower four bits of our bus, because anytime we're going to have a memory address on the bus, it's going to be between 0 and 15. So we just hook those up, and, and that should be it for our memory address. Next is the memory contents. So once we've put an address here, we can either write or read contents from memory, and that's going to be 8 bits. So we need to get these 8 bits here connected to our bus. So it looks like maybe I want to move some of these things up a little bit to make room. I had all these jumper wires measured out ahead of time, but I didn't necessarily know where to put them exactly. Okay, so move those up a little bit. And I think that'll give us room to hook up our 8 bits from our memory. And there we go, we got it to fit. So that's our memory contents coming onto our bus. And then I think the last thing we have is the instruction register. And so there's the instruction register. So that's all of our registers so far. We've got our output register down here. We've got our A register, B register, and uh, sum output, or, or difference, or ALU, arithmetic logic unit. We've got our program counter up here, which is just 4 bits. We've got our memory address register, which is just 4 bits. And then we've got the contents of our memory and our uh, instruction register. Now something else we need to do is, because we have some of these registers hooked to our bus only on the lower 4 bits, we've got to make sure that the top 4 bits uh, default to 0. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie all of these, or, or pull all of these to, to ground uh, with a, with a pull-down resistor. And so these are just 10k resistors that go from ground to each line on the bus. And so if none of the modules on the computer are asserting either a positive or, or a ground signal onto a bus line, then they're, they're going to be sort of pulled to ground by default. So we should have all zeros on the bus if nothing on the bus, if n none of the modules on the bus are actually asserting any, any particular value. Now I'd also like to be able to see what value is on the bus. So I hooked up uh, eight LEDs, one to each bus line, by uh, bending the leads uh, j just right so that they, they all line up very nicely at the top of the, uh, the bus. And then I connected one of the cathodes over to uh, an adjacent board that, that I uh, put next to it so I could get the cathode lined up so that it connects to one of our, our ground points. Then I bent the, the rest of the cathodes over uh, in a line and uh, one by one soldered each of the, uh, the cathodes to each other so that all the cathodes were soldered together. And I used a little uh, mini grabber to, to hold everything in place, which, which worked out really nicely because it doesn't have a lot of thermal mass, so it, it didn't uh, suck all the heat away when I was trying to solder it, so uh, the soldering went pretty quickly. And of course trimming off the, the little bit of each lead as I went. And so here's the finished uh, LED uh, indicator thing that I can hook up here to the bus. So it slides in very nicely right at the top of the bus, just like that and the cathodes are all connected to ground over here. So that should let us see what value is on our bus at any point in time. Now another thing we want to make sure we take care of is uh, connecting power and ground across the board as well. And actually rather than just having that one cross connection for power and ground, I'm going to connect the power down here on the bottom as well, just to make sure we don't have any problems with power distribution on the board. Uh, because you know th these uh, breadboards aren't perfect, obviously, and, and you can get a fair amount of resistance if, you know let's say, power is coming in over here. For it to get all the way around down to here, uh, you know, there's a fair amount of resistance and impedance and things that can happen there. So adding more of these power cross connects and just to make sure you're not getting a, you know, a, a big voltage drop as, you, as, as you're distributing power through the, throughout your entire set of breadboards. And so we'll go with that for now. We've got a pretty decent power distribution. Uh, the only other thing I want to do before we power this up and start playing with it is I uh, just want to make sure the clock is also connected across, because we've got our clock signal, or we've got our clock module up here in the, in the top left, and we've got the signal getting distributed over here, um, but, well, our, there's a few pieces that still aren't connected. So I'll connect the clock input for the program counter here to the clock for the uh, A register, which is already connected down to the B register, and, and then on down to the output register. And then from there, we want to connect it over to the clock module. So we'll connect right across 
and over to the clock, and this is their clock output up here. And so now that clock signal is getting distributed all the way down the right side of the board. And it's already being distributed here along the left side. So it's coming down to our memory address register. And then from there down to, uh, this is actually our memory for when we write. And then we just need to connect it down to the instruction register. So we've got our instruction register clock signal here. So we just need to connect that up to the rest of the clock signals. And there we are. So now this uh, clock for our instruction register is tied into the rest of our clock for everything else. So now we've got our clock signal distributed to all of the different uh, modules in the computer that require the clock, uh, as well as our power. Uh, so I think the only other thing I'm going to do right now is we've got these sort of empty spaces here, and it seems to make sense to add some additional breadboards here, which is where our control logic is going to go eventually. And I'll connect up all the power to each of these. And then I'll add another connection for power uh, just down here on the bottom. Again, just to make sure we don't have any problems with power distribution and getting enough power to all of the different parts of the board. And speaking of power, let's try connecting power to our computer and see what happens. Of course, we've got everything here but the control logic. So each of the modules individually should work just fine. And so we see the program counter is counting away here. And we can turn off counter enable and it stops counting. Um, but each of the modules, we should be able to put its contents onto the bus. So the counter has these three bits set. So if we change our counter out, we see those three bits go on the bus. So that looks good. We should also be able to load something from the bus. So actually what I want to do is let's run this counter. See if I can stop it on one. There we go. Because what I want to do is I want to put a 1 into the B register. So I've got a 1 on the bus now from the counter. And if I go to my B in signal, which is somewhere, B out, where's B in? Oh, that's B in. And if we take that low, then the B register reads that 1 from the bus into the B register. And so now I'll take that high, so we're not doing that anymore. And now I don't have to put this one on the register anymore, so the counter out, turn that off. So now there's nothing on the bus. But if I take the sum, which is the sum of the A and the B, which right now is 0 in A plus 1 in B, is a 1. So if I can put that on the bus, so I can say sum out, and now that 1 is on the bus. And if I read that into the A register, what I'm going to do is stop the clock. If I read into the A register, so if I say A in, it's going to take the 1 from the bus and put it in the A register on the next clock pulse. So let me advance the clock, and you see that happens. The 1 goes on in the A register. But now my sum register is 1 plus 1, and so that's 2, which is going on the bus. And so if I do another clock pulse, it'll read that into the A register, and there's a 2. And if I run the clock, you'll see it's now counting, because it's adding the 1 in the B register each time. So now, if we have our output register inputting from the bus as well, we should see that count showing up on our output register, and there it is. And if we want, we can switch to the 2's complement mode for our output, and now it's counting down to zero, and then it should start counting up to 127. And so I'll leave it there for now, but in the next video we'll take a closer look at exactly what's going on here and what we've built so far, so that we can better understand what it is exactly that the control logic needs to do in order to turn this into a fully functional, programmable computer.